Well, welcome back. This is the third of four videos looking at uh, resource profiling. And what we're going to be doing during this particular uh, very short video, actually, is looking at that security risk profile. Remember, it is covered in the book, Appendix A. You should look at it. Um, and uh, talking about what types of questions you should ask uh, on your risk profile. What things make sense in terms of the appropriate types of questions uh, for doing that. And then what we're going to do in the, the, the last video is get into those core ideas of risk appetite and thresholds. But back on the risk profile. So as you're doing this risk profile and you're capturing all of this information about resources, then you're going to need to be able to rate the sensitivity. And in doing so, you want to consider what financial damages will happen if this resource is compromised, what legal damages, reputational damages, are there regulatory constraints? So, for example, in the case of HIPAA, you have to do a public disclosure. That will lead to, and you have to do notification, uh, and you have to do public notification. So those are going to lead to reputational damage, financial damage, and if you're sued over this, legal damages. Here are some of the types of questions that you're going to see in a risk profile. And again, you can just go look at the book and look at uh, Appendix A, but, but who owns that resource? What data is processed? How is it stored, transmitted? You know, uh, well, how is that data classified? Um, you want to look at what sensitive functions are, are performed on that resource. Are you just dealing with public data? Or are you processing uh, HIPAA data that's going to require um, um, a higher degree of risk associated with that processing? Are there financial, legal, or reputational implications associated with what is going on within that particular resource? You then need to go back and look at, well, what is our users? What's the user community? How is it supported? Is this something we do on-premise? Is it something we do uh, through third party? Uh, do we host it in the cloud? Do we host it on-premise? How do people access it? Is that transmission path secured? Do we have accountability via an audit trail? What uh, maker checker controls do we have in place? What, what change management do we have in place? And then that kind of overall uh, confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability requirements associated with that particular resource. So as you see, this is not something that you just sit down and knock out a thousand of in one day. It's pretty detailed for every single resource. And what the book suggests, and, and, and it's one of these themes throughout the book, is this idea of aggregate this, solve a smaller part of the problem, and then once you have the whole process working, expand it to include more and more resources or more and more of whatever you're trying to do. The idea that some of these challenges, in this particular case, this idea of asset management or asset risk management, uh, are daunting just because of the number of assets. And so you have to aggregate that information and tackle it in a very different way. All right, well, guess what? That brings us to the end of this short video looking at security risk profile. As I mentioned, next video, we're going to pick up on risk appetite and thresholds and how those terms work. So keep on studying. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.